Cathie Wood just dropped a bomb on inflation and her revelation goes against Wall Street consensus. So in today's video, we'll be taking a look at Cathie Wood's thoughts on inflation. Recently, we have seen a lot of news talking about the coming high inflation. If we are not already experiencing this high inflation, we see prices increasing from commodities to materials. On top of these expectations of high inflation, we also see a lot of news articles believing that this high inflation is likely to persist for the long run. So what does Cathie Wood make about these developments? That is what we are going to find out in this video. Inflation as defined by the International Monetary Fund or the IMF is a measure of how much more expensive a set of goods and services has become over a certain period, usually over a year. So what causes inflation or what affects inflation? There are two main forces that determines inflation. The first is inflationary forces and the second is deflationary forces. So these two are opposing forces. Inflationary forces pulls inflation up while deflationary forces pull inflation down. So if the inflationary forces in an economy is stronger than the deflationary forces, then we will see inflation in the economy. And these are some of the main inflationary forces in an economy. The first is demand pull inflation. The second is cost push inflation. By smashing that like button, you can push out this channel to more people so that they can benefit from it too. And the third is monetary inflation. These are the three main inflationary forces in an economy. As for deflationary forces, there are two main types of deflationary forces in an economy. The first is productivity and the second is innovation. So if an economist or a news outlet or even a fund manager believes that there will be inflation in the economy, he or she believes that the inflationary forces are stronger than the deflationary forces. So as long as the inflationary forces are stronger than the deflationary forces, there will be inflation in the economy. But the next question then is whether inflation will be high or mild. To determine whether there will be high inflation or mild inflation, we have to determine how much stronger are the inflationary forces relative to the deflationary forces. If inflationary forces are much stronger than deflationary forces, then it is likely that we will experience high inflation. However, if inflationary forces are not much stronger than deflationary forces, then we are likely to experience mild inflation. And that is Cathy Wood's thoughts on inflation. She believes that in the long run, the deflationary forces from innovation and productivity will bring inflation down. While she believes that there will be inflation and maybe high inflation in the short run, she believes that this high inflation is unlikely to persist in the long term. And the reason why she believes that inflation won't be high in the long run is because she believes that deflationary forces will be strong in the long run. And these strong deflationary forces will pull inflation down to a mild level. So remember earlier on, I talked about how inflation is determined. Inflation is determined by both inflationary forces and deflationary forces. And the extent of inflation in an economy is determined by the difference between the strength of the inflationary forces and deflationary forces. Cathie Wood believes that this difference won't be a lot in the long run. Therefore, she believes that high inflation is unlikely to persist in the long term. And these are the three forces that Cathie Wood believe will contribute to the strength of deflationary forces. Cathie Wood separates these deflationary forces between good and bad. According to Cathie Wood, a good deflation is brought about a fall in price because of innovation and a bad deflation is brought about a fall in prices because companies have to compete based on price. These are the three things that Cathie Wood believe will contribute to the deflationary forces in our economy. The first is innovation, the second is falling commodity prices and the third is lower prices to compete. Now we'll watch short clips of Cathie Wood talking about these three deflationary forces. It does seem, according to the University of Michigan, uh, that inflation expectations have picked up a bit. Uh, 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 when looking at a one-year time frame, but uh, looking at a five to ten-year uh, uh, time frame, in inflation expectations are are still in the two and a half, maybe a little north of that uh, percent range. Three sources of deflation on the horizon. Uh, now you've heard me talk about uh, two of them. Uh, there's the good deflation associated with innovation. Uh, which spurs dramatic growth. Uh, so really good. And to give you a sense of the drama in terms of the deflationary undercurrents, undertoes, that innovation is starting to pull on the economy, uh, we, we use uh, one of the most dramatic in DNA sequencing. Now, health healthcare is almost 20% uh, of GDP. Uh, and it's never seen de deflation uh, except for patent cliffs, and that's a very bad source of deflation. Uh, healthcare, I don't think, has ever seen good deflation until now. So DNA sequencing costs for every cumulative doubling in the number of whole human genomes sequenced, and we're in very, very early days now. 
Uh, so we're going to see a lot of cumulative doublings. For every cumulative doubling, costs decline 40%. Um, this is a bit of a shock to analysts who have watched healthcare and know nothing but inflation and actually base their models on inflation. Uh, in the uh, battery space, battery pack systems for every cumulative doubling, and we're in very early days of electric vehicles, so we're going to see many cumulative doublings. Uh, uh, those costs drop 28%. So think about that. In the transportation sector, deflation driving a boom in electric vehicles. Uh, we're seeing the same in industrial robots. I think it's roughly 25% there. Uh, we're seeing artificial intelligence training costs drop anywhere from 37% to 50% per year. So an artificial intelligence is going to permeate every sector, every industry, every company. And those companies not embracing it the way they should uh, are going to lose out competitively. Uh, so we're, we're very excited about that source of deflation because it will cause a boom. So that's a deflationary boom. We think that the ramifications of this good deflation uh, are going to include creative destruction. Um, uh, uh, the disintermediation or disruption of the traditional world order. And we think that roughly 50% of the S&P 500 um, is at risk uh, of creative destruction, uh, some more, uh, some less, uh, but 50%. That's the bad deflation. Uh, those companies that are too leveraged and have products that will be obsolete are going to have to sell those products at a discount increasingly in order to service their debt. Uh, so good deflation on one side associated with an innovation and bad deflation associated with the creative destruction caused by innovation. The third source of deflation that we believe will take place maybe toward the end of this year, probably more likely next year, is a commodity deflation. We believe that there is a lot of double and triple ordering taking place right now. And, uh, and companies never quite know if it is double or triple or ordering. Uh, I think supply chain management systems are getting better, so maybe it won't be as bad as it has been historically. Uh, but we do think that inventories will build uh, to a level um, well above demand uh, sometime next year, and that the unwinding of them will cause an unwinding of commodity uh, uh, of commodity prices. So those are the three deflationary forces that Cathy would believe will pull the level of inflation down to a mild level. What are your thoughts on inflation? Do you think inflation will be high in the coming years? Or do you think inflation will be at a manageable level in the coming years? Let me know down in the comments below. If you want more videos such as this, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. I'll see you in those other videos to your financial success.